Hello there and welcome to part 3 of this tutorial series and this is the first video where we are actually going to make use of the financial statements that we have scraped in the previous tutorial. So what we've done so far is we have actually a list of all the S&P 500 tickers which we're going to use to iterate at the end to get all the data that we need. Uh, we have a function which gets the financial statement so that this get data is related to the get the financial statements for the company and we have used this global variable because we were going to make changes into these initial lists of variables that we have within this function. Now in this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the profitability. So we're going to convert the Piotrowski F score into Python code. So these criteria, maybe we'll not be using exactly those, but um, it's a good starting point in my opinion. So. I think let's get started and that's the best thing to do at the moment and I'll explain as we're going just to make sure that it's not a boring tutorial. So profitability, we're going to define it as a separate function and within this function we're going to add comments for the score that we're going to be working on. Now ideally we would want to have a score for that that we can store and later on analyze. So I'm going to create profitability score which would be equal to zero initially but of course it will change or maybe not we'll see over time so the first criteria based on Piotrowski's F score is return on assets it should be it should receive one score if a company has positive return on assets or otherwise it would be zero now if you take a look at Yahoo Finance you will see that the, the numbers are shown into more of a financial term I would guess but not accounting term so you don't have debits and credits you see that the total revenue is a positive amount cost of revenue is a positive amount therefore if net profit is positive it means that if net income is positive it means that the company had profit if it's negative it means that the company had a loss so what we need to do is for the first point we need to figure out how to get to the net income for a company and I'm going to run this for now let's have nothing happening there i'm going to run this for actually no let's do it like this i'm going to run it for just one company as we need only one uh, income statement to figure out what is the account that we're looking for so print income statement and what we're looking for is this net income so i'm going to copy this and now let's get the net income for whatever company it is that we are iterating so first we need to get to the income statement and that is something that we have already scraped. Then we need to figure out, okay, which, which year are we looking for? We already have all the years stored in our years list. We're looking for the zeroth element or the most recent year. And then what we need to specify is the account. And this is basically the, the same approach that we're going to use for all of these different criteria. So now once we have that, what we can do is we can calculate our first score net, let's say NI score net income score, which would be equal to one if net income is greater than zero else zero. Now you might be wondering, yeah, but here we have return on assets. Why are we calculating NI this score based on net income? The return on asset ratio is a ratio between the net income and the total or the average assets. But uh, the average assets would always be positive. So at the end, if it's if it's uh, criteria, if it's positive or not, we can just take the net income and just save us a bit of time because it doesn't add any uh, value to go that extra step at this at this point, at least not for this criteria. So we can just use the net income as a base. If it's a positive, award the company with one score, otherwise zero. Now what I what you might argue is why are we not comparing the change in net income? between the years and that might be a good score it's not part of Piotrowski's F score but let's add it so we can show uh, the same approach that works for something that's in a different year and that it's quite easy to get that so net income of prior year would be equal to exactly the same line except we're going to change year to be equal to one or go one year back in time now we can create our NI score 2 so maybe a second score that would be equal to 1 if net income is greater than net income of prior year, else 0. So this is one way to create an if, else if statement, um, or if else statement. And it's maybe, maybe if you have not met it, 
before it might seem strange, but it's quite logical. So this is the part where this is we start with what you would like the outcome to be if a criteria is met, and then else is the second part of the statement. And I encourage you to add a comment. So this would be uh, scores number one and, and two related to net income. And at the end, since we want to store them into this profitability score, we need to add it here as well. So global profitability score. So that looks much better and we can modify this variable within the function. So, so far we've covered point one. Operating cash flow is the second one. So let's run um, the script at the moment and let's take a look into the cash flow statement. So print cash flow statement. What we're looking for is total cash from operating activities. So I'm going to copy this one and we're going to work on score number three, operating cash flow. So our operating cash flow, I'm going to abbreviate that as OP underscore CF would be equal to first, we're accessing the cash flow statement, then the year, which is the most recent year, and then we're accessing the total cash from operating activity. And of course, the score would be equal to one if operating cash flow is greater than zero, else it would be zero. So again, this is quite self-explanatory, but if you have questions, please let me know in the comment section below. So that's all that we need for this score. Now at the moment we have of course, mismatch between points number one and what we have here as scores, but that's completely fine. Score number four. So what would be our score number four? What we have here is change in return on assets. Now, this ratio would be calculated not of the return on assets in a given year, but how it has changed year over year. So we need to find the return on assets that would be equal to some amount, the return on assets of, pre of the previous or prior year. And then we need to compare to create a return on assets score that would be equal to one if the return on assets is greater than the return on assets of prior year, else it would be zero. So this is what we need to fill. These are of course the information that we're missing at the moment. So how do we get the return on assets? The return on assets, what we've mentioned before, is we need to divide the net income with the average assets. So what we're looking for now is the average assets. So let's take a look into how to get the total assets. Print balance sheet. So what we're looking for is this total assets. I'm going to copy this and to get the average, we need to get the beginning balance of the year and ending balance of the year and average both to get to the average amount of assets that the company has used within the year. So average assets would be equal to, we need to get the balance sheet, then years zero, and then total assets. And now what we also need to do is we need to get the same for the year before. So plus the ones from the previous year, and then we're going to divide them by two. So this is the average assets, this is the ending balance, this is the beginning balance of the year, dividing it by two, we get the amount of average assets that the company had within the year. And since we need to calculate the, re the return on assets for the previous year, we also need to, I can copy this, um, but we need to create the average assets related to previous year. And by now you know that all you need is to change the years one and two. Now we can easily calculate our return on assets, which is net income divided by average assets and net income of prior year divided by average assets of prior year. So now we have our score number four, which is a change in return on assets. All right, last point, accruals. One point, if operating cash flow divided by total assets is higher than the return on assets in the current year. So operating cash flow, we already have. Total assets, we don't have yet. And here you can argue that maybe you can just use the average assets, that's also fine, but I will stick with Piotrowski in this case. So let's create our score number five, which is related to accruals. The only point that we're missing from this formula is the total assets. We already know how to get there, so I'm going to copy this. And we're going to store that as total assets being equal to balance sheet, 
for the most recent year total assets. Accruals, what we have is operating cash flow divided by total assets. And then this needs to be compared with the return on assets. If it's greater, then it should be one, otherwise zero. So what we can do is we can subtract directly the return on assets here. And basically, if we have a positive amount remaining, we should have the score being one, otherwise zero. So accruals, or I'll just use AC underscore score, would be equal to one if accruals is greater than zero, else it would be zero. So in a few lines of, well, not a few, but maybe like 15 lines of code, 20, we have our profitability function that first checks and creates a score for the net income. Is it positive? Has it increased compared to previous year? Then one score regarding the operating cash flow, then one score for the return on assets and one for the accruals, comparing the operating cash flow divided by total assets with the return on assets. The last part that we need to do is profitability score. We need to update it because regardless of what we had before, now we need to have a new amount, which would be equal to the sum of all these. So it would be net income score plus, we can have the, the second net income score. It's, it's up to you to make sure that it makes sense or if it makes sense. Then the operating cash flow score, I'm going to add it in just in this one, long line because I have it on half of my screen and it's, the font is quite large. So normally by you, it should be quite okay and visible in one line. Return on asset score plus AC score. So here, these are the five score. Basically for profitability, what we should have is a score between zero and five. So zero would be a company that, has, that doesn't meet any of these five criteria, meaning net loss, um, here we would have um, lower, uh, greater loss than the year before, or, or worse result in any case. Um, negative operating cash flow, negative, or actually decrease in the return on assets, and the accrual score would also be would not meet the criteria. Now I'm going to make sure that this function runs, and we're going to be printing profitability score. So we want to take a look at it. So what I'll do is print ticker just to make sure that it works. But in case it doesn't, let's do this. Try So try to execute these lines of code. And if it works, operating, if it works, what we're going to do is, well, works. But if it doesn't, let's print ticker plus uh, and then something went wrong. We need to check that. Hopefully we would not get this message, but it could be. So it's, it's always good to have this way of uh, structuring the script. So if something goes wrong, you can identify that. And let's get a different approach. So I'll go from 50 to 55, just to have a, another random selection of, of tickers. So what we would expect is the ticker and then the score between zero and five. There is the ticker three, score of three, score of five, score of one, score of seven, and and score of zero. So based on this, it's, it looks quite uh, okay. And it seems that the script is working. So we can see company that has a better um, financial strength and some that have a bit worse. So you can already make some comparison between these companies. And for this tutorial, I like to leave it as at, at this because I think it's probably around 15 minutes already and I want to make sure that I keep it short uh, but useful that you can use this knowledge and create your own scores um, and your own rankings of, of the companies. So for this tutorial that would be all. As for the next one we will be focusing on the leverage part which is leverage liquidity and source of funds. So we're going to create three additional scores and then in the one after that of course the operating efficiency and ideally we would want to have a nice overview of all the tickers, their profitability, leverage, and operating efficiency scores. We can add, for example, PE ratio on top of that. We can add uh, market cap. We can add anything that we want, but it's it's the same approach that we're going to be using. So I think this was a very good introduction to, to using the financial statements that are scraped from the Yahoo Finance using this Yahoo Finance uh, library.
And that would be all. If you have any questions and comments, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.